Hi, I'm Jonathan Kowal, and I'm here to walk you through our demo of our new PowerFlex automation portal. First, we jump right into the PowerFlex dashboard uh, of the system. We show that we're stressing the system a little bit with a, with a small workload here, about 30,000 IOPS uh, and 300 microseconds of round trip latency. Uh, and since we're doing automation, we want to show you that the system is not running any jobs right now and that the portal is going to execute these jobs for you. Uh, resource groups, everything's in a healthy state, nothing happening here right now. Uh, and we're going to jump over to the portal. So this is the new portal that we've built specifically for PowerFlex. Uh, here we're showing we have a couple different stories in the system. This is a Windows VM deployment that would deploy to the VMware cluster attached to the PowerFlex. Uh, just showing this, not going to run this one right now. Uh, we're first going to start with the workflow to deploy a bare metal Linux system. Uh, we've built this workflow in the API to call from ServiceNow uh, directly here to the PowerFlex API. There's no middleman in this. Uh, and that was done intentionally to keep the, uh, the API calls and things like that simple. And then we've also tried to keep the interface simple as well. Uh, so you can see here we have a deployment name which maps directly to the resource group inside of PowerFlex. Uh, and then we assign a host name. And that will query uh, info blocks, which we use for DNS to pull an IP address. And we'll associate those together as a part of this workflow. Uh, and then deploy the bare metal system directly into the PowerFlex and establish connectivity to the PowerFlex storage. So I've already run the request. Uh, this is now starting the workflow inside of ServiceNow, and then I'm going to call out directly to PowerFlex. Jumping back directly into the PowerFlex system, uh, we're still waiting for the workflow to get spun up from the broker. Uh, so we're waiting here in the dashboard and in the, in the monitoring section to see what jobs are running. So now we see the, uh, the automation is in progress. Uh, so ServiceNow is starting to do its work. And now we refresh the screen on the dashboard and we see the job is running. So now we've kicked off the automation. You can see the job name there. So that maps to the deployment name and the resource grain name. So now we're gonna jump in to see the resource groups and we'll see the matching new resource group that's, that's starting to deploy uh, the bare metal system. So ServiceNow is the beginning of this. Uh, it's the starting point to initiate this workflow. Um, and then we're calling directly into PowerFlex and take advantage of the very powerful API available in PowerFlex to run this workflow to build out the bare metal Linux system that we're running here. Um, this specifically is going to build CentOS. That's what we have staged. Uh, but anything that uh, PowerFlex supports as far as operating systems, um, we can support with the automation workflow. So it could be uh, different flavors of SUS, Red Hat or CentOS are, are all supported today. Uh, so here we see the workload is getting started uh, and we will keep an eye on this as the uh, as the automation continues down the path to, to build out this this system. And as the workload continues to run, we're going to start to see here in just a moment, the, uh, the networking phase of this will start to take place and the, the system will start to get to uh, communicating with the switches that are part of the PowerFlex. So uh, in our system, uh, we're using Cisco switches uh, and the PowerFlex is running in what's known as full network automation, uh, where it will go into the switches and actually enable uh, the, the switch ports enable the LECP and the VLANs that are necessary uh, that, that it takes to stand up uh, a new node, whether that's a uh, compute node or a storage only node. So we actually see that in the activity that uh, PowerFlex has made it to a point where now it's communicating with the, uh, with the switches directly to discover the ports, discover the interfaces that are in use, and we'll start that configuration.
Uh, the workload has progressed since so made it through the networking phase. Now we're moving directly to work with the bare metal uh, server, the compute only node. So this is a PowerFlex compute node. We're going to see it moving forward and we're starting to configure the BIOS in the server through the iDirect interface. Uh, so that's happening automatically to configure it to PowerFlex standards, uh, which it'll then proceed to move forward to start installing the operating system. So now we see PowerFlex managers moving to the next step, installing the operating system. Uh, one thing to note about all of these steps here where it's operating directly with iDRAC, it's actually doing this over the, uh, the Redfish API internally, and that is happening natively outside of, uh, out of PowerFlex directly to the bare metal compute. Uh, and then we move from the operating system install into the configuration of the operating system, host name, IP addresses, configuring the, the NICs for getting it ready to run the SDC to get connect to the PowerFlex storage. So steps like that are starting to happen in the automation for these phases right now. Now we see the process start to get a little bit faster that we move past some of the bare metal operations directly on the server. Uh, we're back to the network to validate the connections are in place. Uh, and we'll see this move forward here a little bit quicker uh, where the system takes a big jump in some of the steps that happen relatively quickly, quickly to get the uh, the system uh, operational now with with PowerFlex, and we'll start to see some changes there with the compute node connecting into the the PowerFlex cluster. And we've made it to a step in the process where we're moving past the bare metal direct configuration. Uh, moving into where now we're getting the MDM piece of PowerFlex uh, configured to accept the storage connections from the host and into the storage system. Uh, and that is the pretty much the end of the bare metal configuration to where you can now have follow on steps for OS customization, dropping on other types of services into this through further automation uh, and providing more services. Uh, one thing to note about this process too that, that didn't have to happen here uh, but you see the target version of the RCM up there in the top right hand corner. Uh, if there was anything about this compute node that wasn't directly meeting the current RCM or intelligent catalog that's in PowerFlex, that would have been updated as well. So iDRAC version was out of date, NIC driver was out of date, something was not compliant with the system, uh, would have been applied through this process so that the system is added in a completely healthy state to how this PowerFlex system is running. Uh, we can see at the bottom all the IP addresses have been assigned uh, and now we have a running operating system. Uh, Going to get connected here just to show it's a, it's a real live running system that wasn't running before uh, and you'll see the, uh, the system has been up for a little bit uh, and is in a pretty healthy state. Now that we have a deployed operating system running on the bare metal, Wanted to take a second to show you the template that we were using for this system. Uh, as we drive into this, you can see that we were configuring a template. We've had this published into the system that, and it was in a state where the API could use it. Uh, calling that directly out of ServiceNow. Uh, we're configuring ServiceNow to understand what's in this template, create a JSON file and push that over. Uh, but you can see all the configuration that is in this template that PowerFlex has has available to be configured so that we can configure this to exactly what the specifications of our server, how the network is laid out, bio settings, anything in the hardware that needed to be set, as well as you know, operating, specific, operating system specific settings, as well as getting it attached to the PowerFlex cluster uh, for the consumption of the storage that is a part of this system. And we're going to jump back into the service now so we can look at the uh, the request that we made. We can see we have a completed request. So now this is registered as a complete task, right? If this had been rolled into some sort of change management or some other process, it would be recorded as a successful task completion uh, and updated in your CMDB. And now we're going to move forward with the, uh, the second phase of this demo. We're going to show uh, taking a VMware cluster that is already attached and running on the PowerFlex. Uh, and we're going to scale that out to add more compute into the system. 
So here we start off with showing that the uh, the cluster is a three node system and we're going to expand that to a four node vSphere cluster uh, and automatically attach it to the VDS and attach it to the existing data stores. Uh, here we can see the uh, selection of the workflow inside of ServiceNow. Uh, again, we've tried to make this very simple, um, direct API between ServiceNow and PowerFlex. Um, we had to work uh, closely with PowerFlex engineering to get this process. It's it's not something that's uh, very simple to do. This is um, a little bit more complex of a process. So we work directly with, with PowerFlex engineering to understand how to do it and do it correctly. Uh, make that connection from, from ServiceNow uh, and make it as easy to use in ServiceNow as possible. Uh, but ServiceNow you can see is querying to PowerFlex to see uh, which template right, it needs to use and which resource group we're gonna be working with. Um, we weren't very uh, creative with our naming convention here. So you see the, uh, the PowerFlex 01 2010 CO is the resource group we're gonna work with and then we're gonna start the expansion. Then you can already see that that expansion is starting uh, and the node count has increased from three to four. And we will keep an eye on this as, uh, as it continues through the process, very similar to what happened with bare metal, interacting directly with the networking, uh, dropping the operating system on there. But this goes the added step of dropping ESXi on there versus Linux, but also working with vCenter uh, to get attached to the VDS, the networking and the data stores. And here you can see I mentioned earlier where if something was non-compliant with the system, PowerFlex would identify that and provide any updates. And here we can see we, we dig into that and we can see on this bare metal node that we're applying ESX to, the uh, iDRAC looks to be out of date. So in this process, uh, it will continue to inventory the host to see if there's anything else that's out, out of date and would need to be updated and would update as a part of the, uh, as a part of the deployment. And here we see the, the node and PowerFlex has made it far enough along to where it's been added into vCenter. Uh, we're back configuring and checking out some of the networking on the switches uh, and processing any sort of post operations right with vCenter to get things tied in, uh, is high availability configured, things like that that needs to be associated with the networking and the configuration of that host uh, and added to the, to the VMware cluster so that we can start to use this for the running VMs inside the system. Uh, and here we've got a healthy node added to the system with all the data stores made available to it tied into the virtual networking as part of the cluster. Uh, and this is the end of the demo. So we thank you for the time and please reach out to any of your contacts at ahead if you'd like to see this live or have uh, any further information on it. Thank you.